praise the Lord, people of God. We thank God for today. We thank God for the opportunity He's granted us today also. Today being Friday, is another day that we come together in spirit, even though we are not able to meet physically. We thank God for this great opportunity that we can meet in spirit, even to listen to His word and also be built by His word. We are grateful unto you, Father. Father, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We honor you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all that you've been doing in our lives and you continue to do. For the, before even we were born, Father, you ordained us to be born again through our, your son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his life for us, that we, through him, might receive your salvation. We thank you. We commit our hearts into your hands this day. Even as we come to hear your word, we pray that you take us through your word. Let our hearts be open, our ears be open to hear your word. And when we hear it, let us apply them to our lives. We thank you and we bless you. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, today we are grateful to hear the word of God once again. Like I said, our topic for today's meditation and consideration is this. Hold fast your confession. Hold fast your confession. Normally, when we hear the word confession, what normally comes to, <coughs> into our minds is that the sins that we've committed, we confess to God. So, this is the notion that we have when we talk about confession. But confession goes beyond that. When you look at the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it talks about another form of confession. It says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So we see that this confession is not about you saying the wrongs that you've done, but you confessing what God has done. And this is the confession that we are going to look at. That we shouldn't let this confession strip, strip out of our hands. We should hold fast this confession. And the test that we're going to look at is from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a way, by a new and a living way, which, the, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to do and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as the and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That is Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Now, most of the time we hear there are different opinions about whether a Christian, somebody who is born again can lose his salvation. There are some opinions that says that it, there is no way you, anybody who is born of God can lose his salvation. And there are other opinions that if you are born again and you 
don't hold on to your faith, you can lose your salvation. I go with the, the second opinion. Why? Because it is our faith in Jesus Christ that gives us salvation. That is what I read in the Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him, Jesus, from the dead, you will be saved. So it is not because of anything. It is because of our faith in Christ that brought us salvation. And if we lose that faith, how can we still say we belong to him? It is the faith in him that brought us to him. And you know the devil is so cunning and so wise and so crafty that he has given us, some of us, some false hope. And we think, oh, there is nothing we do can take us from God. Yes, scripture has said that what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Even unbelievers, God still loves them. The sins they are committing, the abominations and all the things they are doing, still God loves them. Nothing can destroy that. When you talk about God's love, it's different from what we confess. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and then all of a sudden you begin to hear the lies from the devil, because you, you went through some challenges, and seemingly to you, God didn't come true for you. And he began to bring doubt into your ears. That, do you see, God doesn't exist. If he really exists, he would have come in because he has promised that he will not leave you nor forsake you. Now you see that he has left you and he has forsaken you. The devil will come with all these things. And if you are not strong, and you will not hold fast, and you don't know the voice of the devil, and you think it is your own thought, you begin to accept it, and before you know it, one day you openly de denounce Christ. And when you do that, your name will be taken out of the book of life. The Bible has said it. He said those who will endure to the end, they will receive the crown. Enduring to the end means that every trials, every temptations, and everything that we want to pull us out of Christ, we should be able to persevere and hold fast. Endure to the end means that something that we have to do, we need to put in an effort we were not just born again and brought into the kingdom of God and, that, and then that is it. We are to work and hold on to that salvation God has presented to us in Christ Jesus. And one thing I would also want to ask those who says you cannot lose your salvation. If you look at the verse 23, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Why would the writer say that if it is not possible, if it is not possible to lose our faith or our faith slip from us, if it is not possible, why would he say we should hold fast unto it? It means that it is possible. We can It can slip from our hands and we will lose it and lose it forever. Jesus gave a parable that normally people call it the prodigal son, which I don't agree that the message is not about the prodigality of the son, but the message is about the backsliding way of the son. The, the son backslided. He left the family and went, if, uh, if this son who left with the, the properties that he went with, assuming that 
he prospered. He didn't squander it, but he prospered. He will never depend, he will not want even to depend on the father again because he has made it in life and he will be separated from the family forever. But when things went bad for him, he realized that he needed his father. So that is the message Jesus was trying to portray, not the money and the waste that he went to do. And Jesus also mentioned strategically that the younger son, not the elder son, the elder son is a matured son. The younger one is immature son. So Jesus was giving us an example that an immature son of God can fall, can slip, but when he returns, he will be accepted. But a mature son, those who have, who have tasted and see that the Lord is good, and when they fall, the Bible says there will be no more remission of sin. If you look at the scriptures, you see so many scriptures that talks about when we willfully sing. And this willfully sin that is talking about in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31. It's not talking about I sit down and plan that I'm going to steal something and I go and steal. And so when I go and do that, I'll lose my salvation. That is not what he's talking about. The willful sin that you, you, you have tasted that Jesus Christ is good. You have come to accept him and have tasted that he is good. He's sweet. Everything is good. But when things go wrong, you begin to doubt him and you renounce him and the spirit of god that was put in you as a seal for your salvation leaves you you have committed an unpardonable sin you have committed a sin that cannot be forgiven that sin is like the sin that adam committed in the garden jesus christ must come again to die for you again and it is not going to be. Jesus will not come to die for you again. So that sin will not be forgiven. And that is what Hebrews 10, 26 to 31 is telling us. Now, let's look at something in 1 Timothy 4, 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There is another verse. Some shall depart from the faith. If normally those who say you cannot lose your salvation say that if you really are born again, there's no way you can. But it, the scripture is saying that they will depart from the faith. The faith is the currency of you being a Christian. So if those people are not, they are fake, they don't have the faith, then they are not departing from it because they don't have it in the first place. But he's talking about those who have the faith and they will throw their, their faith overboard. That is what First Timothy 4, 1 tells us. It says some will depart from the faith and hear as seducing spirits and believe seducing spirits and their doctrines. Like I said earlier on, the devil will come into our minds and tell us things, ask us questions that we, we, we are not able to answer, even though the answer to those questions are in the Bible because we are ignorant of the word of God. We think what the devil is saying is true. For scripture has said that without, we, uh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Our lack of knowledge is causing us so many 
thing. Brethren, let us hold on to our faith. There is nothing to lose when we hold on to our faith. But there is everything to gain when we hold on to our faith. And there is everything to lose when we let our faith slip out of our hands. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 to 24 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. So the scripture is still encouraging us that when we hold on to Jesus Christ, he is able to preserve our spirit, soul, and body if we hold on to him. But if we let him go, or we let go of him, then we are on our own. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. And he said, anyone that comes to him, he will in no way cast out. He will not do it. Never. Jesus will not disown us. But we can disown him. And we will not do it on our own, but by the cunning ways of the devil. He will use people to ask so, so many questions. He will use people to cause us to doubt the word of God like he did to Jesus after he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I hear, I heard something recently about some of our children, the youth who have left here and are schooling us, uh, outside. I heard that some of them have even posted on their social media that they don't believe in God anymore. They are, they, they are now atheists. And when I heard it, and some of the reasons why they don't believe in God, they, they mentioned them. And that day, when I heard it, I was provoked in my spirit so much that I have to come out with a write-up. And I sent that write-up to this platform. I don't know how many of you read it. The write-up is about, is God really God? Or is he really a loving God? If you haven't read it, please go back and look at it and read it. You see some of the answers people are asking because of that they depart from the faith. Are all The answers are all in the scriptures. Now, the scripture still says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. That anyone who comes to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This reward, it is not only on earth here that he will reward us, but he will reward us with eternal life when we hold on to him, when we trust him and we seek him diligently. So, you see, our faith is what counts. Not just because we said we are born again, but our faith in Christ Jesus Christ is what brings us all the goodies in heaven and at the end, eternal salvation. Hebrews chapter 10, sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, talks about we being surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. Let us hold on 
let us let go of anything that be easily besets us. There are so many things that are pulling us back. There are so many things. Some friends, things that we hear from the radio or the TV, the social media, and above all, the, those things that the devil brings in our ears. These are some of the things that draw us back. And he, the Hebrew writer is saying that we should let go of those things and hold on to Jesus Christ. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He began our faith in the first place. So when we remain in him, he will finish it for us. The, the beginning is not so important like the end. The beginning, I'll say that again, it's not so important like the end. I'm not saying it is not important. I said it is not so important like the end. Somebody can begin very well and at the end falter. And somebody can begin very poorly but at the end very, very well. Let's take Atlas for example. Those who, especially those who run long distance race. The whistle is blown and they all start the journey. And somebody is lagging behind. And you see some of them going fast ahead. Halfway of the race, some of them drop out. Then the one that started poorly at the back continued to increase his speed, his or her speed, and gradually he started to overtake others and start continue before they finish their line, he overtakes everybody. So do we say the one who didn't start well, didn't end well? Even though he didn't start well, but he ended well. So the starting, even though it's important, is not so important like the end. So our end as Christians is the most important one. That, that's why the scriptures is telling us that we should hold fast our confession of faith in Christ Jesus. And when we hold him fast, when we hold this faith, definitely God will not disappoint us. God is a faithful God. And he, he, will, he will not disappoint us because he cannot go back on his own word. Brethren, I thank God that we will not do that. We will not let go of our faith. No matter what comes our way. No matter the trials. No matter the difficulties that we, we're going through because of our faith in him. No matter what the devil will bring into our lives. We will hold on to Christ. And when we hold on to him, he will be glorified. And when he is glorified, he will lift us up. We thank God. We bless his name. And my final advice to us is that every question that people, the worldly people, or even some believers ask, the answer is in the scriptures. There is nothing that anybody can ask that we cannot find the solution to that question in the scriptures. So let us study the word of God. Let us read it. Let us meditate on it. If we read and we don't answer, understand, let's ask God. He is the author of the book. And if you don't understand, he is prepared to answer us. So that we will be able to answer others and help them also out of their doubts. Thank God for our lives. Thank God that we will not depart from the faith, but we will hold on to him. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your word for our lives. Father, we pray that we will hold on to our faith. Your grace will help us. 
like you said, that we should come boldly to your throne of grace, that we will obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We pray that we will continually remain in you, no matter the situation that we go through, no matter what the devil will bring at us. We thank you. We bless you. Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.